Statistics is really all about data, so I want to spend a little time in this video introducing the idea of data and talking about the most simplest kind of data that we'll deal with in this course. You can think about data just as information. So when I say data, just think information in general. And let's say, for example, I have some data here about people and their heights. So I have Wendy, Michael, Rachel, and Alan, and their corresponding heights. There's actually a lot going on here with the data that's in this table. So first of all, let's go back to our data information correlation here. So we have information about people and the height of each of those people. So since this is just information here, I could think about this as data. So I have data, not just information. I have data about people and their heights. Because I've arranged this data into a table, we can call this thing here a data table. So when we put our information or put our data into a table where we have a header here across the top or down the side, and then we have our data collected and summarized in a table format, we call it a data table. And we have different types of information inside of this table. So first of all, we have the people. And the people we call individuals. So we would say, these are the individuals. Now it's important to say that individuals aren't always people. They can be cases, things, studies, all different kinds of objects. So when we say individuals, we don't just mean human people. We mean sort of the object around which the data is based. So we have a table here about people, and then we've recorded the height for each person. So this table is really focused on each person. So the people are the individuals in this case. And then the height here, we've recorded the height for each one of them. The height is what we call a variable. So we call this a variable. And a variable is just a property of each individual. So we always have variables recorded for individuals. Notice here that we have one variable for each individual, but we could have more than one variable. So for example, let's look at a different table. This one is about ice cream. So notice here that we have the individuals in the first column. This time they're not people, they're flavors of ice cream. So remember we said before that individuals don't necessarily have to be people. They're just sort of the subject of the table. So we have the flavors of ice cream down the left-hand side, but this time we have three variables, not just one. So these here are the variables in our table. And we've recorded the value of each of our three variables for every individual. So this is the data for an ice cream shop for one month. And we're recording the number of scoops that were sold of each flavor, whether or not that flavor contains chocolate, and whether or not that flavor is smooth or chunky. So is it totally consistent or does it have chunks in it? So for example, cookies and cream, the third row in our table, that has those cookie pieces in it, so it's a chunky flavor. So we have three variables, and one thing we notice right away about these variables is that the scoops sold variable is numerical, it's numbers, versus contains chocolate and smooth or chunky, we've got those variables recorded in words. So it's important to realize that variables don't always have to be numbers. Here we had a height, so that's kind of a number. We have feet and inches, or we could have converted each of those heights into just inches alone. And scoop sold here, we have a number, but our variables don't always have to be numbers. In fact, when our variables are numbers, we call them quantitative variables. So this scoop sold here would be a quantitative variable because it's a quantity. It's a number. We can count the number of scoops sold. We can assign a numerical value to that. We express it as a number. But these two variables are not expressed as numbers. We're expressing those in words. We call those categorical variables. One thing we always want to be able to do with data tables is to describe the individuals and the variables and say whether the variables are quantitative or categorical. So for example, in our first data table about the heights of people, we would say that our individuals are people, that we have one variable for those people about height, and that that height variable is a quantitative variable. In our data table here for ice cream, we would say that the individuals are the ice cream flavors, 
and we've collected data for three variables about those individuals, one of which, Scoop Sold, is quantitative, and two of which, Contains Chocolate and Smoother Chunky, are categorical. Now, both of these tables, both of these examples, are examples of one-way data, as opposed to two-way data, which we'll talk about later. So one-way data is data that's focused on or collected about just the single individual. Another way to make sure that you're dealing with one-way data is to think about how many questions you have to ask. So for example, with our ice cream table here, if someone says, how many scoops of ice cream did you sell? You would only have to ask one question. You would say, for which flavor? And they'd say, oh, for chocolate. And then you would answer 450 scoops. We sold 450 scoops for chocolate ice cream. Or for this table here, if someone asks you, how tall is the person? You only have to ask one question, which person? They'd say, oh, Rachel, and you could answer then 5-3. So you only have to answer one question if the data represents one-way data. When you have two-way data, you'll have to answer two questions, but again, we'll get more into that later. Now, the only other thing you want to think about when you're talking about one-way data tables is the number of individuals that you have compared to the number of variables that you have. In both of these tables, we had more individuals than variables. So in this table, we had four individuals, Wendy, Michael, Rachel, and Alan, and just one variable, height. In this table, we had one, two, three, four, five, six individuals, vanilla, chocolate, cookies and cream, mint chocolate chip, fudge brownie, and rocky road. So six individuals and just three variables. When you have more individuals than variables, you're usually going to go ahead and list the individuals down the left-hand side of the table and then put the variables across the top of the table before filling it in. But sometimes you might have the opposite situation. You might have a smaller number of individuals and lots and lots of variables or just more variables than you have individuals. And usually in that case, it's helpful to flip the orientation of the table. So let's look at this last table here which is information about two houses that are for sale in your neighborhood. So here we have two individuals, 317 Spruce Road and 819 Lilac Street. Those are two different houses for sale in your neighborhood. And you've gone and collected all of this information about both houses. So we have two individuals and what? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, it looks like, variables for two individuals. So in that case, it's much better for us to write the individuals across the top and all the variables down the left-hand side. If we tried to do this table in the same way that we did the tables for ice cream and people and their heights, it would be extremely wide. We would have 317 Spruce Road and 819 Lilac Street down here on the left, and then we would have all these variables listed out to the right here across the top and the table would be way too wide to be useful. So when that's the case, flipping the orientation of the table and putting the individuals on the top and the variables down the left-hand side is really, really helpful and makes the table a lot easier to read. So as you're creating and analyzing data throughout this course, just remember that one-way data is when we have one or more variables, they could be quantitative or categorical, for one or more individuals, where the individuals could be people, they could be ice cream flavors, they could be houses, doesn't matter, but one or more variables for the individuals. And if we want to know for sure that this is one-way data, we just need to ask ourselves, how many questions do we have to ask and give ourselves an example? So if somebody says in our third table, how many bedrooms does the house have? We only have to answer one question, which is which house?